Hello and welcome to this week's show. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're doing great. Do you want to display information from your Arduino to your computer's monitor? One common method of doing this is using the print function from the serial library. This will be a two-part episode. In this week's episode, we're going to talk about the intricacies of the print function. So by the end of today's episode, you'll have a solid understanding of how to use it. Here's a brief overview of exactly what we'll be talking about in this lesson. First, we'll talk about some of the key applications of the print function. We'll do an overview of the serial library. We'll talk about the basic use of the print function, how to actually make it happen. So why would you even want to use the print function in the first place? You may know that a function is a programming tool. You know, it performs a specific task for you. Now, the task of the print function is to send information from your Arduino to your computer so that you can see the value displayed on your computer's monitor. Now there's a lot of reasons why you might want to display information from your Arduino to your computer, but two reasons really stand out to me. So the first is being able to see information that you're generating on your Arduino. Let's say for example that you have a temperature sensor hooked up to your Arduino and you want to be able to read the output from that sensor. You know, you want to see what the temperature is. So you can use the print function to send that data to your computer. You open up the serial monitor window and it allows you to see that information on your computer screen. So that's one reason. The other big reason is for debugging purposes when you're writing code. So a lot of times when you're developing an Arduino sketch, you know, you've written some code and the output of that code, like the function of the Arduino, it acts differently than what you wanted it to do or what you expected it to do. And so maybe you've got like some variable and it gets incremented every so often and then it reaches some threshold, it blinks an LED, something like that. But you notice in actual practice when you upload it to the Arduino that the LED is blinking more often than it should be. Something's not working right. Now you can open up the Arduino sketch and you can kind of look at the code and try to understand what the code's doing just looking at it. But one way to really get a sense of what's happening to that variable is to print the value to your computer's monitor so you can actually see how the variable's changing over time. And that gives you a lot of insight into what's actually taking place in the program. The print function makes this visualization very easy. Now we can't talk about the print function without briefly talking about the serial library. So generally speaking, a library is simply a collection of functions that all have something in common. And the print function is part of a library called the serial library. Now it's not serial like Cheerios or Captain Crunch, and I'm not saying those aren't great or anything, but this is serial as in one after another. And that's because the serial library sends information to other devices piece by piece. So the serial library allows us to interface the Arduino with all types of different hardware, like for example, our computer, which we'll be doing in this example. Now in order for us to use functions of the serial library, we have to initiate serial communications and we use the begin function from the serial library to do this. Now this begin function needs to go in the setup of your sketch. And for reasons beyond the scope of this discussion, it's convenient to use the number 9600 inside the parentheses of the begin function. What this does is specify the baud rate, which is the rate at which information is going to pass from your Arduino to your computer or in the other direction. Now let's talk about how to use the print function in its most basic form. So here we are in the Arduino IDE and I've got a new sketch opened. And what we'll do is we'll say we've got a variable and this variable we want to we want to be able to see the value on the computer monitor at any given point. So let's go ahead and make a variable. So I've declared an integer called cool factor and I've set it equal to 10. So this is the value that I want to be able to see on my computer monitor. I want to track this value from the Arduino, send it over to my computer so I can visualize it. So the next thing we need to do, which we talked about, is we need to initiate serial communications. And we'll do that in the setup. So we use the begin function from the serial library and we specify 9600 as the baud rate. Pretty simple to start serial communications. So the next thing we do down in the loop is we actually want to use the print function. So let's do that. Okay, so we've got the print function. We've, we've used it two times. Notice that anytime you use a function, you have to write the name 
of the library where the function comes from. So the print functions from the serial library. So we start the line of code with serial, we have a dot, and then we name the function, with this, which is print. Now our first line of code, we've got serial.print cool factor. So what we're doing is we're saying, hey, Arduino, send the value of cool factor over the serial port, send it to some other device. And we want to send it in a way that we can read that is human readable. Okay, so what, what does that really mean? What am I talking about here? Well, what the print function does is it takes the value that you're sending and it encodes it as an ASCII value. Now, ASCII values are ways of taking numbers and turning them into human readable text. Now, that's probably a gross generalization slash misinterpretation of what ASCII is actually for. But for our purposes, I think that's a pretty reasonable explanation. It's going to take a value, it's going to make it so that you and I can understand what that value is, and then it's going to display it. It's meant for printing, for displaying. So it's going to take the value 10, which is cool factor right now, which we set it at, and it's going to send it over the serial port when we display it on our computer, it's going to show up as the number 10, but that number 10 is actually an ASCII value. Now, the next line of code, all I've got, I've got the same thing, print.serial, but I have quotes in a space in between. So what I'm, I'm actually using this for formatting purposes because I want each value we send to be separated by a space. If I didn't have that space, then when we open up the serial monitor, which we'll do here in a moment, then all the numbers would be kind of crammed together. But by sending that space, basically that blank spot, I insert the blank spot into the output on the serial monitor window. All right, and then this final line of code here, it just increments the cool factor by one. So every time through the loop, we take cool factor, which was 10, and we add one to it. So the second time through the loop, cool factor will be 11. The next time through the loop, it'll be 12, 13, so forth, and so on. This just gives us a little variation. And so that value would constantly be changing, and that changing value we could then display to the serial monitor. So let's go ahead and upload this and look at the serial monitor window. All right, so all these numbers are sliding around. I'll go ahead and stop auto scroll, and we can see that the value keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. There's a space in between, and we see the number being set. So that's pretty easy, and that's basically how you use the print function. So that's it for this week's show. In next week's episode, we'll jump in right where we left off. We'll talk about some more of the intricacies of the print function. For example, how to print decimal values, how to change the format of the output, and the basic di difference between print and print line. I hope to see you then. Hey, if you enjoyed this tutorial, I welcome you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. We've got a ton of videos like this on the channel. You can also check out the Open Source Hardware Group website. We actually have a 12-part crash course in learning the basics of programming and electronics with Arduino. Tons of people have checked that out and really enjoyed it. I've gotten a lot of positive feedback, so I'd welcome you to go over and check that out. We also offer a premium course if you're really interested in getting to know Arduino, understanding the coding, and getting an idea of getting a handle on that stuff, then I welcome you to also check that out. Hey, well, I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.